after the domain of the boundary value problem is created, it needs to be discretized so that it can be solved approximately. Start the mesher by double clicking on Mesh in the Workbench window. Once it opens, we should see our geometry in the window. In the top bar, under the Home tab, change the units to metric with millimeters. We can generate an initial mesh by selecting mesh in the tree and clicking generate. When the process completes, we can see the mesh in the window. This is a good initial mesh, but we can refine it. First, we want to change the global mesh sizing to make it less coarse everywhere. Select Mesh in the tree, and in the Details pane, change Element Sizing to 1 mm by entering 1 in the box. This will decrease the size of the elements for our entire model. We can extend this to improve it further by selecting the Mesh tab and clicking Sizing. Ensure the Body Selection filter is chosen and click on the model to select the entire geometry. In the Details pane, Click next to Geometry, and select Apply. We can now add a local element size to the body by again changing the element size to 1 mm. Next, we want to refine the mesh further near the fork in the artery, because we expect larger variations in the flow in this region. To do this, select Sizing again under the Mesh tab. Click on the geometry again to select the entire body, and click Apply in the Details pane. Next, change Type from Element Size to Sphere of Influence. This allows us to define a spherical region in which the enclosed elements will be refined more deeply. To define the position of this sphere, we need to create a new coordinate system. To do this, right-click on Coordinate Systems in the tree, and under Insert, select Coordinate System. This allows us to define the new coordinate system. Click on the model as before, and in the details pane, next to geometry, click on it and click apply. We can see that this has moved the origin of the coordinate system closer to the center of the model, placing it near the fork. While we can further update the position and orientation of the coordinate system, we only care about its placement, and this seems sufficient. We can use this to define the sphere of influence now. Click on Body Sizing 2 in the tree. And back in the Details pane, next to Sphere Center, click on the arrow to expand and pick Coordinate System, which is our new coordinate system. Next, enter 12 for Sphere Radius to set the radius of the sphere to be 12 millimeters.
looking at the geometry, we can see that this region encompasses the branching section well. Finally, back in the details pane, change element size to 0.5 millimeters. This will make the element smaller inside of the sphere. Finally, we want to refine the mesh by making it more uniform near the edges of the geometry. This will help to capture near wall behavior in the flow, including boundary layer development. In the mesh tab, select inflation. With the body selection filter still selected, click on the entire body, and in the details pane, click apply. We now want to indicate the boundary of the geometry to specify where we want to refine the mesh. While we can select these faces similar to how we did it in the geometry step, assuming the name selections were created correctly, this can be accomplished more easily by changing boundary scoping method to name selections. And in boundary, expand it and select wall. We can see that this has specified the desired faces. To specify how the mesh should be refined, Change inflation option to total thickness and enter a maximum thickness of 0.6 millimeters. Ensure that the number of layers and growth rate are set to their default values of 5 and 1.2. This means that near the wall boundary, we will create five elements within a 0.6 millimeter thickness from the wall. These elements will grow in size as you move away from the wall according to the growth rate, with each element being 20% larger than the previous one. This will help to capture near wall behaviors. With all of the refinement options added, select Update in the top bar to apply the refinements. When the process completes, click Mesh in the tree to view our new mesh. Firstly, we can see that the size of the elements has decreased everywhere from the global and local body sizings. We get slightly higher density areas near curves in the geometry by default. Near the branching section, our elements are smaller from the sphere of influence refinement. This will help to better resolve the flow properties in this region. If we use the middle mouse button to rotate and look at one of the inlets or outlets, We can see the rings of elements created by the inflation option. These uniform elements will help to capture the flow behavior near the wall. It is important to note and understand that this mesh extends through the entire body, not just the surface. To view this, change your view to see the side of the artery. Under the Home tab, select Section Plane. This allows us to select a plane on which to slice the geometry in order to view the interior. With the model running vertically as shown here, left click and drag to draw a line through the geometry where we want to slice. 
and release to create the slice. If we then rotate our view to view where the model was sliced, we can see the elements inside of the domain. The solution process will find values of our primary unknowns at the center of each of these 3D elements. To return the model to normal, select the Section Planes tab in the bottom left corner and deselect the plane. With this completed, we can close the measure. Back in the workbench window, make sure to save the project.